Hello everyone, this is Alex from warnoffkeys.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create your own API using AWS API Gateway. So here I'm in Visual Studio Code, I'm navigated to this folder in my console and we have an empty folder. We're going to go ahead and initialize a project here. Our goal at first is to create a very simple Lambda function that we can upload to our API Gateway. That way we can actually run the code to see if it's working. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to simply have it return a random number. So inside of our project, I'm going to run npm init-y to initialize the project. And I'm also going to create a new file called index.js. I'm going to create a main method, which would be an asynchronous method that has an event parameter. The event parameter will be filled with information from Lambda if necessary. This information could be your parameters on your URLs on your API or other things. So for now, what I like to do is I like to console log the event. That way in our logs, we can actually see what the incoming information is. And we're going to return an empty string. Then we're going to give Lambda actual access to this method by using exports.handler equals main. We can then save this. And we're going to go into our package JSON. And I'm going to paste in a test script that I've been using in my videos. You can find this in the video description. So now if we save this, we can actually run this code like a Lambda function if I were to run npm run test. We see we have our event, which is an empty object, and it's returning an empty string, which we see right here on this line. So everything seems to be working. If we close this, we're now going to return uh, a JavaScript function in order to return a random number. So this will return a random number between 1 and 100. So if we save this and we run it, we're now going to see 5. If we run it again, we see 74. We keep running this, we see a random number. So our JavaScript function is now done. We're now going to upload this to Lambda. And after that, we're going to be creating our API and hooking it up to our Lambda function using a Git request. So if we go over to AWS, we can open up Lambda in a new tab. We're going to create a new function. This function will be called random number. And we're going to create the function. Now, because we have no dependencies, we can copy this code right into the inline editor right here. We can control S to save in the inline editor, and we can click on save at the top right. We can go ahead and configure a test event just to make sure everything works well. And just going to call this test, and we can keep the default parameters the same because they're not used. This is the information that we passed into the event object right here. So going back here, we can create this test, and we're going to run the test function by clicking test. We see it succeeded. If we look at the details, we see 96. If we run it again, we see 16. So this is working here. Now we're going to go over to API Gateway, and we're going to click on Create API. We're going to find REST API, and we want to build one. So this will be REST, a new API. I'm going to name mine Tutorial. You can name yours whatever you want. We're going to create the API. And here we're going to see all of our endpoints. So under Actions, we can create a new method on the selected endpoint. This one is just the index. Or we can create a new resource, which will allow us to create additional endpoints. So if we create a resource, we want to make sure we always enable API Gateway cores right here. And then under resource name, we can call this one random dash number. We can then create the resource and we see it right here on the left panel. Now, if we go to create a method, we have a drop down and we can create a bunch of different methods here. We're looking for a Git request. Click on the check mark and it's going to ask you for a Lambda function. If I type in random number, this will auto complete it. We can just select that one. Make sure that if you don't see it, that you look at your Lambda region. That needs to be the same region that you're using on your actual Lambda function. If we go back, we can click on Save. It's going to prompt you to add permission for the Lambda function to be ran through API Gateway. Just click OK. And now we're here. So we have a few different options here. We have to click on Method Request. We can go to URL Query String Parameters. And here you can add different query string parameters. Don't be used in this exact video, but if you want to add them, Here's how you'd add them. I'll be covering these more in depth in a future video. Authorization could be used for making sure that your user is logged in through AWS Cognito, for example, which is something I'll also be showing in another video. And then API keys is something I'll be covering in the future as well. Once those videos come out, a link to them will be in the video description of this video. So if we go back, because there's not much to do right here, integration requests, this becomes a little complicated. However, once we have uh, query string parameters, things being passed in from the URL, we'll be able to actually map those into the event parameter that we get in our Lambda function right here. So we actually have access to them on our code. We can do that through this section here. 
In this exact use case, we don't need to do that because we have no parameters. So we can go back to test things. We can click test on this column right here. We're going to have everything be blank. We're going to click on test. We see a random response right here. So under response body, we see 45. If we run it again, we can see 50. So this is actually running the correct Lambda function. So if we go back, we can now go ahead and deploy this API. So under actions, we can simply click on deploy API. We want to create a new stage. This one will be called dev. We can then deploy. And this will send us to the stages option on this far left column. Here we can have a similar view. We can click on the get request we just created and we can see the invoke URI. So we can open this in a new tab and we see a, a random number. We got 14. If I refresh, 24, 67. So as you see, we get a random number and this is actually running the Lambda function through API Gateway. So there's a lot more things that API Gateway can do. It's a very powerful tool, especially with combined with another powerful tool such as Lambda. And I'll be covering a lot more in the future, so make sure to subscribe for that. Thanks for watching this AWS tutorial. If you need help or have a video request, be sure to leave a comment down below or ask in the Worn Off Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description. If you want to learn more about AWS, consider clicking on one of the videos you see on your screen now.